In this video, I will show you how to access values of elements, for example, text, that are present on a page. And we will do that with Google Tag Manager variable called DOM element. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. When your browser loads a page, it downloads things like HTML file, CSS, JavaScript files from the server. And then the browser renders elements that you can see in your browser window. Without jumping into technical details, those elements that were generated are called the DOM. But keep in mind that this is a very oversimplified explanation. So. Thanks to the DOM, developers can manipulate how websites look, for example, change the appearance of elements and add new elements, but also developers can access existing DOM elements and read their values. For example, maybe on the order confirmation page, there is an order ID displayed to a visitor. You could use the DOM to access that ID and use it in Google Tag Manager. And this can be done with a variable called DOM element. So let's take a look. When a browser tries to load a website, it first downloads the HTML file of the website and then renders the view that you see in your browser window. Of course, this view is also affected by things like CSS and JavaScript, but right now let's focus on HTML. So if you want to see the HTML code of this page, you need to do the right click and then choose view page source. This is a static code. It describes various elements and then the browser when downloads this HTML code, it interprets it and generates elements on a page. If you want to change something in this HTML code, you would need to ask a developer to change the code of the actual file on the server where this is hosted, then update that file, I mean, save it in the, on the server, and then you would be able to see those changes in this HTML code. However, when the browser downloads this file, it renders a thing called document object model. Now document object model actually can be accessed by, let's say doing the right click and choosing the inspect. And in the elements section, you can see the elements that were rendered by the browser after that HTML was downloaded. At first sight, when we compare this view with the HTML code, they look quite similar. For example, right here, we see the head. And if we expand the head right here, we will also see the meta element right here, which is this one. So it looks quite similar. However, they're very different. This is a static code. You cannot do anything with that from the client side. So I mean from the browser with JavaScript, with Google Tag Manager or whatever, but you can definitely work with the DOM right here because DOM is a dynamic representation of the code of the website uh, HTML code. And what I mean by that is that you can see how these elements are connected. You can see the tree like structure and also you can retrieve certain values of elements on the website. You can add them, you can delete them, you can edit them, you can do whatever you want. And if you do that in the DOM, those changes will be visible in the browser window while the HTML will remain unaffected. Here, let me show you an example. So here I have a website menu and let's right click and inspect the first item right here. And we see the item right here. It is now selected in the element inspection section of the developer tools. Now, if I want, I could actually change the word home to something else. As you can see, the value is now changed and it is no longer home. However, if I go to the HTML code right here to the source code, and if I refresh it and search for home, I will still see that element right here. So as you can see, the element was not affected in the HTML because this is a static code, but it was affected in the DOM because DOM is dynamic. You can manipulate the DOM. You can retrieve certain values, or if you want, you can change them. In fact, if I wanted, I could even do the right click right here, delete the element, and this element no longer is available in the DOM. But if I do the refresh in the HTML, that element is still right here. As you can see, here is home. The way how I am manipulating right now, the DOM is quite manual, but if you want, you can learn some JavaScript basics and you would be able to manipulate the DOM in a more automated way with the code. But in this video, I wanted to focus more not on writing custom JavaScript, but on a variable that is available in Google Tag Manager. And that variable is DOM element. So DOM element variable basically allows you to access any element on a site and get its value or a certain parameter if you wish. 
Let's take a look. So first of all, I will refresh the page and this is a demo page of the order confirmation page. So imagine that I have landed on this page after I made a successful purchase. So what I see here is the order summary, things like order ID or let's say order total. These values are right here. Now, ideally, you should ask a developer to push the order information to the data layer and then use that in your tag management. However, not all projects are perfect and sometimes you either don't have a developer or developers are way too busy, but you need to start tracking something as soon as possible. So in that case, working with the DOM element variable might help. Let's say that we want to activate the Google Ads conversion tag when a visitor makes a successful purchase. And together with that tag, we also want to send the order ID, or in this case, this is order number, and also the order total value right here. So first of all, what we should do, we need to go to Google Tag Manager and create DOM element variables. So go to Google Tag Manager, variables, and in the user defined section, click new choose variable configuration and then select DOM element right here. There are two ways how you can select methods. A simple one is the ID, but elements don't always have IDs and a more advanced option, but which is also more powerful and more flexible is CSS selectors. Now we need to somehow instruct Google Tag Manager to return the value of this text. So the best way to figure out how can we select this element is do the right click on that element and choose inspect. Luckily, in our case, that value, that ID right here is an element that has an ID called order number. So in this case, what we could use is that we could use the selection method ID and in the element ID field, we could enter that name of the ID right here. So basically what we're telling Google Tag Manager is that we are looking for elements on a page that have an ID called order number. And if we leave this variable as it is, this variable will return the text of that element. If that element had some additional parameters, we could enter the name of that parameter of that attribute and that value. And then the variable would return not the text of the element, but a certain parameter of that element. All right, so now let's name the variable. And let's do the same thing with the order total. Once again, let's do the right click on this element, inspect it. And luckily, again, we see the ID right here, which is order total. And if we entered this ID in the DOM element variable, this would also work. But this time, let's pretend that there is no ID on this element. So we need to work some other way out and we need to figure out how to get this value with an element that has no ID but has a class. So can we use the class as a condition to pick this certain value? Yes, but we need to be careful. First of all, what we are going to do is that we are going to use CSS selectors. So if you're not familiar with them, you should definitely do some research, do some Googling and learn more about CSS selectors. Or also I explain this topic in greater detail in my intermediate slash advanced Google Tech Manager course. I will post a link below the video to that course. So speaking of this class, can we use it as a condition in our variable? The thing that I would check is that we need to figure out how many other elements are there on this page that are using the same class. Because if there are many, chances are that you sometimes will get the wrong element and you will return the wrong value. So this is a bit advanced, but bear with me. So I copy this class and then I go to console and then I enter the following command. You will just need to memorize that or write it down and use that at some point in the future anyways. So this method is a DOM method. And what happens is that we will now check how many elements are using that certain class. However, we are not done with this method yet. We need to enter the CSS selector of elements that we are looking for. So in this case, we are looking for all elements that are using this class. But if you are familiar with CSS selectors, you would know that every class must start with a dot. We enter this CSS selector right here. We click enter and we see the list of all elements that use this class on this page. Luckily, we have only one element right here. If there were more elements, we would see the entire list of those elements. So right now, this is a good thing. So what do I mean is that 
we can definitely use that class as a condition in our DOM element variable. If you had more elements, then you would need to create more precise CSS selector. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, then create a new DOM element variable. This time we use CSS selector and then we enter dot and the class name that we are targeting. Let's name the variable and save this variable. Now we need to check whether both variables are working properly. Let's refresh the preview mode, then refresh the page where we're working on and starting with the DOM ready event right here, let's go to variables and check. Yep, we have both variables and they return proper values. So this is the order total and this is the order ID. Don't try to use the DOM element variables on container loaded. In some cases, the DOM might not be ready yet. So if you, for example, fire a tag on container loaded and you are trying to use DOM element variables, in some cases you will not get proper values because in some browsers or on some computers, the DOM will not be ready yet. So I mean, that element might still not be present when you are trying to fire a tag. That is why you should always use the DOM ready or further triggers after that because this indicates that DOM is ready and DOM elements are ready so you can access them. The next thing is to create, as I said, Google Ads conversion tag. So first of all, let's go to Google Ads. Then you should go to Tools and Settings, Measurement, Conversions, and you will land on this page. Click plus icon right here and let's create a new conversion. Choose Website, then choose the category. So right now we're tracking Purchase. Click Purchase, then Conversion Name can be something like that then we will be passing dynamic values with each order so if order value is let's say 100 dollars, we will be sending 100 dollars. and that is why in the value section we should choose the use different values for each conversion since i am working with dollars right here i should choose the currency which is us dollars then i keep all the other settings as they are right here and click create and continue then i choose to implement this with google tag manager and here I have two values that I need to use in my tag. So conversion ID. First of all, I copied this value, then go to tags, new tag configuration, Google ads conversion tracking. And in the conversion ID, I need to enter this value. Then I copy the conversion label and insert it right here. Then speaking of conversion value, I need to enter my DOM element variable right here. So I click this button and choose order total so this is the conversion value transaction id is another dom element variable and currency code can be a variable if you have that variable or if you always are operating in one currency you can enter that currency so right now i'm operating in us dollars then if you want and need you can do some other configuration but right now i want to focus more on the capabilities of the dom element variable that's why i will pass this i mean i will skip this and in the triggering, we need to fire this tag when a purchase is complete. So what we need to do is that we need to fire a tag when the page URL contains pages slash thank you for purchasing. So I will copy this and in Google Tag Manager, I click on triggering and I click a plus icon because we will create a new trigger, trigger configuration. And in this case, do not choose page view because as I said before, you need to choose DOM ready or some further events because you need to make sure that the elements that you're accessing are already on a page. They are rendered. That's why DOM ready is a good choice. And choose some DOM ready events and page path contains that part. Let's name the trigger. Finally, let's name the tag. Save it and let's test everything. Refresh the preview mode, then refresh the page. Also, before refreshing the page, I would recommend that you install a Google Tag Assistant Chrome extension. And after you do that, you will see the icon right here. Click it and click Enable. I will post the link to this extension below the video. So when you enable it, then refresh the page. What you will see is that on DOM Ready event, your Google Ads conversion tag has fired. Then you should click on the Tag Assistant. You should click on Google Ads conversion tracking and you will see the values that were sent. We see the conversion value, we see conversion currency. If you want to see more information, you can click on URLs and then switch to table mode 
and you will see also the order ID. The parameter is OID right here. Also, don't forget to go back to Google Ads and click Next and Done. That way you will finish creating your conversion. This status will remain unverified even if you fire this tag right here. So don't worry about that because the, the status will change when an actual conversion will happen. So this means that someone clicks on your ads and then makes a purchase and then this tag is fired. Then the status will change of this conversion. And that is how you can access website elements with DOM element variable. Remember, do not try to use this variable on the page view event, which is also known as the container loaded. Use DOM element variable when the DOM is ready. In other words, when the event DOM ready appears in the preview and debug mode. Get it? You work with the DOM when the DOM is ready. If the DOM element variable doesn't work for you, there are usually two reasons for that. First one is that your CSS selector is incorrect. And the other one is that element that you're trying to access is not yet injected. Usually this happens when some JavaScript on a site adds elements to the website a little later. So if you're dealing with the second case, you should somehow delay the usage of DOM element variable even more. And in general, keep in mind that scraping DOM is quite fragile and can easily break. If you have the smallest chance of cooperating with a developer and getting custom data in the data layer, do that. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.